Today what we got going on is a cast iron repair. So we got a part that's completely broke off. It's not just a crack, so it's separated. And what we're gonna do is uh, kind of go over how we're gonna fix this thing right here. I uh, put a little list of what I'm gonna do here. Uh, we're gonna start by preheating this thing. So we're gonna hit it with a torch, uh, make sure that uh, there's no localized heating going on so it can spread all the way out throughout the part. That's why you preheat. Also, we're gonna burn off any contaminants that are on it. So again, that's why we're gonna preheat it with a torch. Uh, we're gonna grind number one I wrote here. So you're gonna grind 50% of the way through the brake. All right, and then we're gonna throw it in the rod oven, which I got written over here at 250 degrees. So we're gonna preheat it, uh, grind it, throw it in the rod oven, and then when we get ready to weld it, we're gonna preheat it again and make sure it's not localized in that actual crack area. Then we're gonna to go to weld number one. When you weld cast iron, you gotta use nickel rod. We're using nickel rod in the stick welding process. I like to use sticks so that it draws out any contaminants with that flux. So we grind halfway through, we're gonna weld it, then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna grind halfway through it again. Uh, I got kind of a, an arrow going to peen. Are we gonna peen it? I, I've gotten less peen action done on these. As of late, I do more heat control, but you can peen it and I will peen it a little bit with a chipping hammer. Uh, peening means you just tap it with a hammer and kind of relieve that stress as you're welding it. So once you get grind number two done, you're going to go into weld number two. You weld the backside. Then you get into your post heat. This is one of the most important things when you're fixing a cast iron uh, part because it'll, it tends to crack. So the post heat, we're going to heat it up again, throw it in the rod oven, and then I do that overnight. And then what I do is I wrap it in a blanket, and all I have out there right now is a bunch of welding gloves. So I'm going to pack it in a bunch of welding gloves and a welding coat. So we're going to leave it in the rod oven overnight, wrap it in a blanket for three, four hours, and once you can touch it with your hand, I'm just gonna let air cool after that, but really, really slow cool this thing so that you don't get any cracking. So we'll go out and we'll take a look at the part. All right, here's a look at our cast iron parts. You can see it's been welded before. There's a weld right there. So what we're gonna do now is preheat this for a couple of reasons. A, to get it warm, and B, to cook any oil off of it. There does seem to be a little bit of oil on it. So we're gonna preheat this, and then we're gonna throw it in the rod oven. Got her in the rod oven, so it's at 250 degrees. We're gonna let that soak for a couple hours because I got a meeting, and then we'll get to uh, grinding this thing, cleaning it up. So we just got done grinding this, and we beveled everything on the inside. And we're gonna weld that up first. Then we'll bevel the other side second because we, we did the inside first because we won't be able to get a grinder in there once it's tacked together. All right, we're getting ready to weld this thing. I got it in the vise. I'm going to hold the broken piece up to the back, tack it on the back side, then flip it over and start filling it in. You want to make sure you got everything you need ready to go because once you start this process, you really can't stop. We got our miller over here at around 90 amps. We got a cutting torch that's hot, ready to go for any kind of post heat that we need. Electrodes around here, chip and hammer, wire brush, wire wheel, stingers ready to go, fan to pull the fumes off. We're ready, let's get into it. Okay, so we just finished welding the inside. Came out really good. We did have 
and a pinhole right there, so I just stabbed it and filled it in. I'm going to flip it over so you can see the back side. You did bleed through, and I think the old weld that was on it cracked, so we're going to have to redo that. And I'm going to grind this, but just so you're aware, there's a lot of air moving through here because we're trying to keep good ventilation. I'm afraid that's going to make it cool a little too quick. So as I'm grinding, I'm going to be hitting it with a torch, making sure it doesn't cool too fast here and there. All right, so here we go. Let's grind it. process we trenched every bit of the side that we just welded up the back side anyways you can see we're way more than halfway through you can see there's a little bit of a hole there I'm gonna throw this back in the rod oven get a sip of water and then we're gonna weld the ever loving daylights out of this and finish this job up Okay, so we just got done welding this part. It was in the oven all night. So it's at 250 degrees for just overnight, I guess. And then I usually take these gloves, wrap it up like this. Once I get it out of the oven, I usually grab a welding coat, mash it all together. And I'm gonna leave that for about another three hours while I do something else and test it, see if it's gotten a little bit cooler, and then we'll clean it up a little bit. We gotta drill that hole out still and do a little machining. All right, we just had this thing cool down. You can touch it with your hand now, you can see the other side. And there is a hole in this that we're gonna to have to pretend to be a machinist for a little bit. So we're gonna machine through the hole, machine a flat spot here on both sides, and then we will call this thing done. So we'll go set up a mill and finish it up. Machine this down, broke all kinds of rules about machining. This is the other side. I think we're all set. We're gonna send this down the road. Another cast iron part welded. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld, and we will see you next time.